anyone see my good spectrometer? You left it in the reactor again. Do you really think it's the professor that's sending those messages? That's what he said. But I think he's just covering it. Yeah. Where did I leave my goggles? They're on your head. Keep an eye out for anything else weird while I'm out of the lab, okay? You got it. Oh, I had some thallium samples around here somewhere. They're in the... the thallium sample I was looking for. Zoe, are you all right? I'm okay. Oh. Um, was that another one of your weird experiments? No, that was just a everyday run-of-the-mill Bay Area earthquake. Is there anything damaged? I don't think so. Oh, well, it's a good thing I run earthquake preparedness drills two times a day. Isn't that a lot? Well, the mice do seem to get rather annoyed that I keep shaking their cage every day, all day long. What do you learn from doing that? Well, you learn how much uh, mice get annoyed by shaking their cage all day long. <laughs> Call JD. We should brush up on our earthquake science. Okay. I'm gonna be in the secret lab making sure everything's okay. Did you guys feel that? Hello? Change of plans? Seismology? Yeah, I'm at the California Academy of Sciences. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Hey, can I help you? Hey, what's shaking? I'm here to learn about earthquakes. Oh, well, great. Well, you've come to the right place. Where do you want to start? You want to talk about geology? Sure. You know what geology is? Uh, not really. OK, well, geology is just the study of Earth and what it's made of. OK, so it's basically studying rocks. It's rocks, but more than just rocks, too. Uh, if you think about it, the Earth is like a huge sphere, right? Hmm. The very center of it we call the inner core, and it's hard. We think it's mostly made out of iron. And then just outside the inner core is the outer core, and it's mostly liquid and, and, and fluid. Just outside of that is the mantle. The mantle's quite thick, and it's mostly plasticky, and it does move around a bit. And then the crust is the outside part. That's basically where we live, right on the top. So how do earthquakes happen? Well, so that crust, we think, is probably broken up into a lot of little plates. Have you ever heard of plate tectonics? I've heard of it, but could you maybe explain it? Okay, well, well, plate tectonics is a really important theory for geology, and it really unifies a lot of what we know about the surface of the Earth and the Earth as a whole. The idea is that that crust where we live on the outside is mostly broken up into little plates, and those little plates can move. Actually, they're quite big, right? Hmm. And right here in California, we actually have two plates that are sliding along each other. So sometimes they, they get stuck just due to friction. Um, and then sometimes all at once the pressure can build up enough that they begin to, to move. And there's enough energy release that it can you know, shake the Earth. Wow. And how often do earthquakes happen? Oh, they're happening all the time. We estimate that each year there are probably several million earthquakes that happen around the globe. And do you know how we know this? How? Well, we've got over 8,000 different seismic stations all around the globe that are constantly monitoring and feeling the shakes. And in fact, did you know that right here in the Bay Area, we're on the Pacific Rim, and about 80% of the larger earthquakes that happen, happen right around the Pacific Rim. Whoa, we need to get the heck out of here fast! Oh, well, don't worry too much. Even though we know that there is going to be an earthquake, there's no reason to think that a big one's going to happen like this year or next year. Have you ever felt an earthquake? Have you ever been in one? Actually, no, but my uncle has been in a 1989 earthquake. But it was before I was born, oh, so... Well, if you want to feel one, you can actually feel one right here in our earthquake simulator. Hmm. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's check All it right. out. Let's go. All right. October 17th, 1989, 5.04 in the afternoon. The third game of the World Series had not yet started, but players had started to warm up, and coverage of the game had already begun when the earthquake struck. Whoa! Woo! Oh, my God! Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Professor Kasky from San Francisco State University. My name's John. Hi, I'm Zoe. I'm the lab assistant. Nice to meet you. Have Zoe? a seat. 
feel the, the tremor earlier? Um, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> really? Did you guys feel it? Yeah, it shook the lab pretty good. So you I were must have been in my car. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so you're a geologist. Uh, yes, I happen to specialize in earthquake geology. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? Well, earthquake geologists go out and study and gather evidence of past earthquakes in the field, right along the fault traces. Okay, so what does studying the past earthquakes tell you from? Well, past earthquakes, um, we're studying, studying the faults and past earthquakes on the faults tell us about how the tectonic plates are moving, the rates that the, that the microplates are moving, and the likelihood of large earthquakes along a given fault. Oh, yeah, okay. JD was actually just telling us about tectonic plates and that there are a lot of active fault lines in California right now. So can you tell me more about those? Well, yeah, I can. This is a, I brought this map along. <laughs> yeah, I this noticed. is from the U.S. <laughs> Geological Survey, which uh, the western headquarters are in Menlo Park, just a few kilometers or a few miles north of here. And so what this map shows is, is the, the active faults in the, in the Bay Area, and they're outlined in thin, thin yellow lines. And, or thin red lines, excuse me, mm -hmm. and then the seismicity or, or micro seismicity, which are earthquakes that have mm -hmm. occurred in the, in the time period between 2003 and 1970. So about 33 years of earthquakes are, re are shown on this map. And, oh, wow. and they, they fall along a lot of the main fault lines yeah. in the Bay Area. For example, uh, the San Andreas Fault which runs right through here. So uh -huh. there's a thin red, lo red line and a lot of micro seismicity. The it yellow, they're actually the little circles. There, huh? runs through here, through, runs offshore at Daly City, and then up through Point Reyes, and then on oh, to Northern wow. California. And the San Andreas Fault splits off down here near Hollister. It splits off onto the Calaveras. Calaveras Fault then forks off onto the, the Hayward Fault. So here's the Calaveras Fault and the Hayward Fault. And some other faults. Here's the, the Greenville Fault, the Concord Green Valley Fault, the Rogers Creek Fault. And those are the main faults um, active faults in the San Francisco, greater San Francisco Bay Area. These happen to be strike-slip faults, which means uh, at the Earth's surface, the, the plates move horizontally past each other. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're right lateral strike-slip faults. For example, the, the San Andreas Fault, which runs right through here, the, mm -hmm. direc this, the direction of the plate motions across the San Andreas Fault go like this. Mm -hmm. So that the western side of the San Andreas Fault moves to the northwest relative to the east side of the fault. Oh, that's really, really cool. So what would happen as the plates continue to move over time? Well, as the plates move over time, the configuration of the, of the land will change markedly. These faults are moving, you know, around at rates of around 5 to 10 millimeters per year. Oh, that's not very much at all. Yeah, a little, a little slower than your fingernails grow. Is, oh, is wow. The, yeah. We're most interested on when the faults last moved during large earthquakes, mm -hmm. uh, how often they go on average, and the average rate that the, that the plates move across the fault. Okay. So those are the most important things. And then that information goes into estimating probabilities for large earthquakes on right. the fault. Right, so you can predict earthquakes? Well, we can't predict earthquakes. And we probably will never be able to predict earthquakes because earth, earthquake predictions require that you can say exactly when and where the next earthquake's going to occur. Mm -hmm. What we're able to do by collecting information on past earthquakes mm -hmm. is to better forecast, we call it forecasting, the probabilities of earthquakes on faults. Like, just like meteorologists forecast the weather, they mm -hmm. don't predict the weather, but they forecast it. They, mm -hmm. they estimate the probability of rain tomorrow yeah. afternoon or, or this afternoon. And so, so we are trying to uh, collect enough data good data to allow us to estimate when earthquakes are likely to occur on given oh, faults. Wow, so, so we could have an earthquake right now? We could have an earthquake right now, yeah. Anytime. The, there are faults in the Bay Area that are considered overdue for a large earthquake. Oh, wow. Occasionally there are, it, it's not a, a way of necessarily predicting earthquakes, but every once in a while there are physical uh, phenomena that occur before earthquakes. We call them precursory phenomena. And mm -hmm. for example, if a, a large foreshock can be a sign that an earthquake is imminent. Oh, okay. So that makes me think of a hypothesis. So the little tremor that we had earlier, 
could have been a foreshock to a really huge earthquake. Absolutely, it could have been. Mm. That's a great hypothesis. Uh, for one reason, it's an easy one to test. Mm -hmm. Just wait a few days. Okay. And if a big earthquake followed on the same fault that, a, that that tremor occurred on, well, it was sure enough yeah. uh, a foreshock to a large earthquake. Sounds and if it enough. doesn't happen, then we're still waiting for the next big one. Sounds simple enough. What is going on? Ow! Hang on, um, I will be right Ow! back. Ow! Hey, let go! Ow! You don't open the door. Damn. I can't come in and help you. Ow! Right, of course. Okay, ow! Ow! I'm fine, I'm fine. Forget about it, forget it. Carry on, carry on. Get over here, you. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Sorry about that. Okay. So, if you can't predict when an earthquake will happen, what can you do? Well, the best thing to do is to be prepared for when it does happen, since we don't know when it's going to happen. You just always have to be prepared. Everybody should have an earthquake kit, which, has, which means you should have some extra food and water, flashlights, batteries. extra batteries, a radio, a plan for meeting family members in case mm -hmm. you're not home when the earthquake happens, because mm -hmm. there's a possibility that you won't be able to get into your home. Mm -hmm. So what about a community? How can, how can a community be prepared? Well, the communities of the San Francisco Bay Area and other areas that uh, are prone to large earthquakes do have planning scenarios in which mm -hmm. they, they sort of say, well, what if a big earthquake happens, say, on the Hayward Fault? What kind of things are going to happen? What, what transportation arteries are going to be closed? Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of damage that might occur at critical facilities like hospitals and bridges and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, and then aren't they building a new Bay Bridge? They are fixing the Bay Bridge, as, as a lot of people know, uh, that were around for the Loma Prieta earthquake, that the, the Bay Bridge went down. The upper deck kind of collapsed yeah, down yeah. on the lower deck. It's kind of, there's some famous photographs of that. So they're trying to fix the Bay Bridge so that doesn't happen the next time. Right, and that earthquake. was during the Loma Prieta earthquake. The 1989 Loma Prieta mm -hmm. earthquake, the World Series earthquake. So this is an area of the fault which, you know, is fairly close to San Jose. We're sitting in here in the central part of Santa Clara Valley. Mm -hmm. And so this, this the fault um, section that ruptured is pretty close to us right here. Mm -hmm. However, um, there was a lot of damage. The Bay Bridge is up and through here. There was a lot of damage around the perimeter of the San Francisco mm -hmm. Peninsula and around San Francisco Bay. Yeah. And yet that's a long ways from, from the actual site of the earthquake where the, where the ground motion was strongest. So 
an alarming thing to think about is that the earthquake forecasters actually believe that the Hayward Fault, which runs the whole length of the Bay Area and, um, and right along and within a major metropolitan area, that this fault is probably the fault that's most capable of producing the next large earthquake in the Bay Area. Oh, well, that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> well, sorry about that. So, if tectonic plates are constantly moving, does that mean that California's landscape is constantly changing and it's going to like fall in the ocean someday or something? Well, California's <laughs> landscape is constantly changing, um, but it's a common misconception that California is going to fall into the ocean sometime. <laughs> um, in, in contrary to that misconception, California in almost every instance is actually rising up. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's actually undergoing tectonic uplift oh, at very wow. slow rates in most places, but it is coming up. The, the, the Santa Lucia Mountains and the Santa Cruz Mountains over here are all rising up out of the ocean at low rates. Oh, wow. So we're not really too concerned about California falling into the ocean. We're more just concerned about strong ground motion associated with big earthquakes. Anything else? No, but we could take a look at the video that the California Academy of Sciences oh, okay. sent over with us. I'm JD from the Modern Advancements Department. Hey JD, I'm Scott Moran. I'm the Director of Concept and Exhibit Development here at the California Academy of Sciences. Hmm, nice to meet you. Yeah. That exhibit was really cool. So you just went in the Shake House? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What made you guys build a replica of a house? We really wanted to create an experience and recreate the 1989 and 1906 earthquakes in San Francisco. Hmm. And a lot of people are at home when it happens, so we actually recreated a house, a Victorian house, a lot of houses that you would find here in San Francisco. The 1906 earthquake? Isn't that the one that destroyed half of San Francisco? That's right, and what happened was it was actually mostly the fire and the things afterwards that uh, really caused a lot of the damage. Hmm. So it's actually the idea of being prepared. If people were prepared, there wouldn't be quite as much damage. So. Uh, what we do is we have a little preparedness uh, area, and this is, uh, the first thing you should do is make a plan. And these are basically six steps that you can do and take this home nice. and do it. Uh, but basically, the first thing you should do is make a plan. Okay. Then, next thing you need to do is actually make a kit. And the kit consists of all the things that you're going to need in your house or at work or at home or anything that will help you to survive for about three days. Hmm. Because it may take a while for the power to come back up and all these different things. Then right after an earthquake, the most important thing is to check for hazards. The idea of when an earthquake is happening, you're going to have uh, all these things broken glass, down power lines, water leaking everywhere. So you want to be able to check for those things and make sure you're not getting yourself in harm's way by walking out into these, this dangerous area. So one of the things we actually have here is how you can check for natural gas because one of the big things is if you just turn off gas without thinking about it and if there isn't really a gas leak, only the gas company can turn the gas back on. Mm. So only turn it off if you actually smell gas and if natural gas is leaking. Well, can we try it? Sure. Okay, so uh, just press this right here. You press that. Ew, it smells weird. So it's a, it's a chemical that's added to natural gas because gas doesn't normally have a smell. Mm -hmm. But if you smell that smell, then you know you need to turn off the gas. Okay, so just... Oh, okay. So after checking for natural gas, the next thing is, what if you didn't have enough water in your house and you didn't put enough in your kit or you ran out? Hmm. <clears throat> there are other places in your house that you can look for safe water to drink. And okay. we have a couple of different examples of places you might look. Huh. So, would you like to try some? Of course. Ooh, what about the fish bowl? Because I eat like fish and sushi. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Give it a try. Oh, oh I don't think that was the right answer. Because the, the fish is in the bowl, and then the fish goes to the bathroom. I need some for the bowl. Oh, oh, oh you're right. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. <gasps> what? The toilet? Yeah. Actually, the back of the tank is okay. It's the bowl that you don't want to be drinking from. So the other things you need to think about after an earthquake is staying connected. Okay. So, because you need to be able to find your family, your friends, and everybody that you want to be uh, together and be safe. The phone lines are going to be down. You're not going to be able to call people, but you might be able to have cell phone access. Hmm. But remember, a lot of people are going to be on the cell phones. Just like when you're at a fair or a festival, it's really hard to get through to people. Yeah. But if you text, it's a lot easier to get through. So that's the idea. If you're prepared, it's not as big of a deal when an earthquake happens. Yeah. Remember, it's not a question of if an earthquake is going to happen, it's when. So if you're prepared, it's less of a big deal. Thank you so much for your time. You're I'll welcome. definitely tell the professor. That way we'll be ready for the next big one. All right, that's great. Thank right. you. Thank you. of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Not you again. Go away. Did you see Professor Kasky? Oh, yeah, he came by. Well, what'd he say? Well, he said that everything looks pretty good and we're in pretty good shape, but there isn't much you can do to predict earthquakes, so people just need to be prepared. Well, earthquakes are happening constantly. I mean, the Earth itself is in constant motion. Uh, the best thing you can do is just design your structures to withstand the forces of an earthquake. Hey, I'll show you. Okay. <sighs> building blocks. These are scientifically calibrated building blocks. And this is an earthquake simulator. Cool. Um. What does it do? Well, it's uh, a way to simulate earthquakes. Well, yeah, but what is all this stuff? <laughs> well, this, if you will, is the plate that our continent sits on. And this is the ocean of lava underneath it. Okay. And these are the blocks that we're going to build several designs of buildings to illustrate how we can resist the forces of the planet. OK. <laughs> so first off, let's try building something bottom heavy with a good stable foundation and see how that stands up to our tempestuous earth. Okay. I'm a copycat. I got mine done first. You're copying me. <laughs> what? All right, this is where it gets exciting. Goggles on. Okay. We're gonna have an earthquake. <laughs> ah. All righty. Now, earthquake waves can come from well, they travel in two directions. They travel this way, and they travel that way. So let me unleash some P waves. They're gonna fall. Holding together pretty good, though. Unleash some S waves. And it finally fell. it fell. But <laughs> that lasted a pretty good time. How about we build something? without a good foundation. Okay. Hmm. I 
think maybe a skyscraper for me. Oh, hmm. Hmm. look at that. Hmm. 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 Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see how they take the force. I'd say that's what we call in engineering a catastrophic failure. It didn't work very well, did Not it? a stable design. Jeez, <laughs> oh, they're all over the place. <laughs> Buildings fell in San Francisco and landed in San Mateo. I know. So basically, what we see here is that without a good foundation, you're not, you have no chance of resisting the power of an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Several ways that have been tried to defeat this crazy shaking is actually what we've done here is we have these rollers that sort of allow mm -hmm. it to go back and forth. Well, if you put your building on rollers. It just rolls instead of shakes? Yeah, imagine that this was the, the entire foundation. Mm -hmm. Then it just rolls with the flow. Oh, yeah. That's pretty No smart. problem. That's, that's about as stable as you get. Not going to fall over there. Yeah. But the more unbalanced and the higher she goes, the faster she falls. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Okay. Earthquake! That was not the normal Bay Area earthquake. Well, I guess my hypothesis was right. That was a big one. I bet the mice are really upset now. See, Zoe, earthquake preparedness does pay off. You got the emergency kit. What's that smell? Well, when you pack an emergency preparedness kit months in advance, maybe you shouldn't fill it with tuna fish sandwiches. Yeah. We'll get these flashlights and we'll look in every corner of the lab and make sure everything... Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, nobody panic. Zoe, stop panicking. panicking. Zoe, stop panicking. What are we gonna do? We have to go in and assess the damage. Me? Go in there. What there's, you always said. There's what? no time. Stop arguing and stop panicking. Now follow me in there and do the thing I explicitly told you never to do. Let's go. 